Good evening and welcome everybody to iBug Buzz episode 592 for July 17th, 2023. I'm Greg and I'll be co-hosting tonight with Sandia. If we have anybody new that's joining us on this call that's new to iBug or the iBug Buzz, uh, whether you're joining us on this call or listening to a recording of this call, we want to extend a special welcome and encourage you to keep coming back every uh, week for these iBug Buzz calls. The iBug Buzz is an open forum where we encourage people to bring questions, issues related to their iOS devices, and specifically uh, using voiceover on those devices. And that would include the iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Apple Watch, and the iPod Touch, and any accessories that we use uh, with those devices like keyboards, uh, headphones, uh, AirTags. Uh, we like to start each call with announcements and a preview of other iBug events coming up during the week. So for that, I will turn it over to Sandia Rao. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yes, we have a very full week, so let's get ready. Everything is on Zoom and everything is central time unless specified otherwise. As Greg said, the next two hours, we're going to be talking about the iOS and all the peripherals and fun stuff. At the midpoint of our call, we'll have the big reveal for our movie, so hold on for that. Then tomorrow is Clubhouse from 5 to 6. It's the Mac Buzz. Any questions relating to your Mac are perfect fodder for that call. Then Wednesday is Android Insight from 7 to 30. Anything, uh, you know, relating to the Android platform, your Google tablets, and your Alexa devices. I don't want to say it too loudly because you know who will start talking. So come and ask your questions there. Thursday is iBug Trekkie Talk from 8 to 9.30. We've got some great episodes. We're in the next generation, season six. We're reading, watching ahead of time, and then discussing the chase and frame of mind. So we're in season six of next generation. Then Friday's iBug Night of the Virtual Movie starts at 8 p.m. Social time at 7.30. We have named that tune, some jokes, and then general silliness and just get to visit and hang out and then after the movie we have a discussion and trivia then saturday saturday from two to four ibug apple workshop there we have some great review of the latest apple news from the last month and then we will have some cool demos by our favorite presenters and come and ask your questions because that's what it's all about so that'll be from 2 to 4 on Saturday. Social media, we have iBugToday.org is our website. You can visit there. You can register. All of our services are free. Registration is free. Once you register, then you'll get notifications of upcoming events. So that is definitely a way to stay apprised of what's going on. Uh, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash iBugToday, a great place to post questions and help others with their questions. We have a Twitter, is at iBugToday. We have an Instagram, at iBugToday. Uh, you can also send non-technical questions to our email at iBugToday at gmail.com. We have a mentoring program where we help people learn how to use their iPhone for beginner users. And we have lots of people that are interested in getting help but we desperately would like some uh, help from people that have experience and would like to be a mentor we have some wonderful mentors but we have definitely an influx of of new people that are interested so if you uh, are you know good with your iphone and participate on the call we would love to hear from you and um, it might be a little intimidating you think that you have to know all the answers and that's not true Often what happens is you may, you know, come across something and then you can look it up and figure it out and uh, nobody's expected to have all the answers. I mean, nobody does, but uh, so it can be a really good re rewarding and learning experience for the mentor as well. Uh, let's see. I think those are all the announcements, Greg. All right. Thank you, Sandia. 
I wish I'd known about iBug back when I was learning how to use the iPhone. I'd probably have a lot more hair now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so let's do a quick trip around the room and give everybody a chance to say hello. Uh, to do that, you'll need to unmute, state your name, tell us where you're from. And if you're new to iBug or the iBug Buzz, please share that with us. So I'll get things started. I'm Greg from a very, very toasty Texas. From a very <laughs> toasty Colorado. Hi, Janet. And, and John from a toasty Texas. Hey, John, welcome. I'm Ann from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, Ann. I'm Vanessa from Georgia, toasty Georgia. <laughs> toasty Georgia. Hi, Vanessa, welcome. Is Doc Pete from Southern Shore. California, toasty too. Okay, I got Doc. Fire. We have fire, yes. Pete okay. from Florida. Hey, Pete. Hey, Greg. Chanel from my air conditioned department in Toasty, Texas. Hi, Chanel. Mm -hmm. You just need to stay inside. Yeah. Yeah. Who else have we got? Gloria. Ed from Georgia. Okay, Gloria, welcome. Ed from Hi. Georgetown, Ontario. Hi, Ed. Hi. Marie from Reno at 104. Hi, Marie. Hmm. Anybody David else? From Houston. Hey, Dave. Hi, David. And who Hi. else did Vincent we have? Vincent from New Jersey. Hi, Vincent. Karen from Hot Philadelphia. Hi, Karen. Hi, this is Shay Brad from Seattle. Whoop, we got Adam Brad Dallas. and Shay from Seattle. Hi, Shay. Welcome. Anybody else? Brian from, from North District. Oh, sorry. Okay, I got Brian and Sandia. Yep. Sri from Virginia. And Jody from New Hampshire. And I got Sri and I got Jody. Welcome, guys. It's all like a big family. Desi from Franklin, Tennessee. Hi, Desi. Hi. Anybody else want to say hello? Okay. I, I didn't, uh, Sandy, I didn't hear anybody that sounded new. So let's just, uh, let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Who wants to get us started? Janet in Colorado. Janet, go ahead. Um, my husband had a question. He was wondering, is there a way to answer and hang up calls with his iPhone using the NLS e-reader? Does anybody know? Okay. Does anybody have any experience with that? What did she say? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. This is Chanel. Chanel, go ahead. Yes, you can. Um, I don't know. So I know the two finger double chat. The two finger double chat double tap gesture is a one five six chord. And I believe that should work on any Braille display. I don't know, you know, how well does it work with hanging up and answering calls? How well does it work? You know, it's supposed to be able to play music. Um, and I'm going to double check that chord to make sure I'm not incorrect. But he can definitely give that a try. All righty. Oh, thank you. Yeah, good. Yep. Thanks, Chanel. Thank you, Janet. All right. How about another question? Hi, Vanessa. Vanessa, go ahead. Yeah. Um, how do you just bring up uh, the keyboard for someone to practice? I think they have the feature on the phone. How do, how do you bring up the on-screen uh, keyboard? Yeah, because I have one uh, friend that needs to practice, and um, I was just wondering. Okay. This now, Pete. yeah, Pete, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking of the uh, practice keyboard, the um, voiceover practice mm -hmm. area? Yes, yeah, Pete. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's in settings. If you go to settings, accessibility, voiceover, flick down about three times, you can get to it there. But a quick okay. uh, gesture is the four finger double tap. Just tap the screen mm -hmm. twice with four fingers okay. and it will open it up. And then you cancel okay. out either the two finger scrub, the, you know, do the the sign of the Z 
which is your scrub gesture, or do another four finger double tap that will exit it and open it and close it. It's kind of like a toggle, the four finger double tap. Oh, okay. 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 Is that is that what you were looking for? The uh, yes. The voiceover, yes. the gesture to practice your gestures. Uh, yes, that would be okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Good. Thank. You. Thank you, and thanks. Thank you, Pete. Sure. Thanks, Pete. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Who's got a? Who has another question for us? This is Dot. Dot, go ahead. Um, just want to ask, why is my um, Apple ID? subscription and media purchase button is dim i don't know why so i can't get in it okay tell uh, me so, tell so, me again so, your you okay, know that yeah. in the in, in the setting in the setting there's a button of uh, say uh, apple id and subscription right. and media purchase button right it's being dimmed so i cannot do anything with the button uh for some reason so i cannot get in there to edit my password or or um, maybe cancel a subscription, something like that. So okay. if anybody know how to solve that problem, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, does anybody have any uh, suggestions for Dot? This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. I don't have a solution, but you know what? Mine's dimmed too. It's been dimmed for a couple of days. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with that security update. I've restarted oh. my phone. I've waited. And it's yeah, me too. Still, it's still dimmed, so I don't know. It, uh, is it specifically the media uh, subscription? No, the whole thing. The whole, my, no, the whole my, thing. Wow. The whole thing. Yeah, when so I go to the settings, my name up at the top, it says it, and it says dimmed. Tapping on it does nothing. I had not dimmed. noticed that. Yep. Yeah. That could be that latest update. Open settings. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is Scott. Um, go ahead. I was uh, trying to see how to cancel a certain subscription before I, uh, um, you know, subscribe to it, just in case, you know, I have to cancel. Uh, that's how I discover it's dim. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. that's good information. I'll, yeah. I'm, I'm eager to check that. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Another question. This is Chanel. Chanel. Go yeah, ahead. I just wanted to confirm. I tested it. Dot one five six cord is the magic tap uh, gesture on the Braille display. All right, good. So, Thank you, yep. Chanel. No problem. All right, who's got another question? This is Ed. Ed, go on. Um, I have an iPad and an iPhone, and. I have Zoom set up on my iPad. Can I use the same account on my iPhone or do I have to open a separate Zoom thing with a separate number? Okay. Can you use the same Zoom account on separate devices? Who wants to? Brad. Brad, go ahead. You should, but technically you can't have more than one of them open at the same time. It'll kick one of them off. I mean, I know that's true on computers and I can have my computer open and my iPhone open and it doesn't seem to matter, but I've never tried to have an iPhone and an iPad open at the same time. Logic would make me think that it's going to kick one of them off. It's going to sign you out and you'll have to re-sign in. So, but no, you don't need more than one account. Just use only one at a time. Yeah, this okay. is Desi. So yeah, Desi. Does it go I was, ahead? I was just going to say too that um, you you probably when you set it up on whichever device you don't have it on right now, it will ask you to sign in, and you'll have to do that. But yeah, as far as I know, as well, you can't use both devices signed in at the same time. All right, good. Brad, did you have something else you wanted to add? No, that was it. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, guys. Good question. This is, this is Brian. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, one more step, though, that you'll have to do when you install it on your iPad is it'll send you a code to your phone, allow this device to sign in with your account. Okay, good. This is, this is security. Pete. Yeah, Pete, go ahead. I'm confused. Uh, going back to Brad, if I could query. Uh, 
because I've been on simultaneously on my Mac and my iPhone. Why would an iPhone and an iPad be different and not permit not allowable? This is Brad. No Brad, clue. It just nope. Okay. I've just been doing it for years. I mean, if I have it open on one computer and I forgot it's open and I go to another computer and open it, it'll kick the other one out. Okay. So only one computer can be awake and have the zoom app open on it, but I can be in a zoom meeting and then open it on my iPhone. And the mm -hmm. two don't seem to have anything to do with each other. I assume it's cause it's a different platform, I see. Uh, okay. but I have never, I have it on my iPad, but I never use my iPad. So I can't tell you uh -huh. what happens if I have it open on an iPhone and an iPad at the same time, but gotcha. Okay, thanks. Right. I, I'm guessing it's different platforms because I think I've had it open on a PC and an iPhone at the that's, same time. That's what I think. I've yeah. definitely had it open on a Mac and an iPhone at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All, all right. right. Thanks. Time. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Who's Who's got another question for us? This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make a correction from what I said last week when Brad did the demo on the uh, send mail delay. I said the default is set to off, but the correct answer is set to by default is the 10 seconds. I just want to correct myself. Right. Good. Thanks, Marie. This yeah. is Marie. Go ahead, Marie. This is just a quick comment. I just went into my settings and my and my name was not dimmed and I was able to double tap on the button and get right in. And I okay. do have the new security update. So Okay. All right. Good. So mixed results on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to do that during the second half and see see if what what my phone's doing. All right, who has another question? This is Helene. Helene, go ahead. I my hey Siri, like where are you? Is not talking to me, and I can't remember. It sounds it's a very basic question, but um, also when I came to be in this meeting. I couldn't get in because my contacts didn't show uh, the iBug, but I kept swiping until I finally heard iCloud, all contacts. So obviously it's in some, but not in all of them. Um, but um, how do I get back to Hey Siri? Where are you? Okay. Uh, so when you do... H-E-Y, Siri, she's not talking, not responding, not responsive. Yes. Yes. Okay. Anybody yes. have any ideas on that? I have one thought. I know if you're, if you're the speaker on the, or the mic on the bottom edge of the iPhone is covered up at all, uh, then she's not going to respond or that's been my experience I, my okay. wife had a i think a sweater or something laying over her iphone and uh, when she did the hey siri it uh, was not responding and once she uncovered it then it was fine but you have to be pretty close pete pete go ahead well just a reminder helene you, your settings under syrian search is where the uh uh, setting the button is to enable Hey Siri. I don't know if you've inadvertently yeah. maybe turned that uh, off. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it's in Hey Siri. It's it's in the in Siri setting. And search. Siri and search. Siri and Siri. search. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or um, there's a separate Siri setting. I'm not sure which, but I would check that if you maybe uh, inadvertently turned it off. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank Thanks. you, Helene. Thank, Thank you, Pete. You. All right, who's got another question? This is Desi. Desi, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add to the unofficial poll. Um, I just went in and checked in my settings on my iPhone and um, I do have the latest security update and it is not dimmed, so. Okay. What are we, three to two now? Sandy, are you gonna keep scoring this? I don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking to make sure you're still awake. Uh -huh. Okay. Who's got who has another question? Karen. See who is it, Karen? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, 
you know, the problem that we've all been having where the voiceover just goes out just for seconds or whatever. Right. 100% of the time now when I log on to Zoom, it goes out right there. It goes out other places as well, but now it's 100% of the time when I go to Zoom and I'm trying to swipe over to, uh, you know, connect an audio. So I just have to, you know, press the side button and then go back in and it's okay. So I wonder if anybody else is having that problem. 100% right. of the time with Zoom. Yeah. What are what are people experiencing on the uh on on voiceover stopping talking? Are people still having that trouble? I mean specifically right when you get to Zoom, like one hundred percent. All right. Yeah. This Anybody? Is Sorry, go ahead. Um, Karen, have you rebooted your phone? Uh no. Um, I would try that first because that might fix some of the voiceover issues that you're experiencing. Okay. Yeah. How do you reboot? What kind of phone do you have? Uh, 13 mini. Um, the way I do it is I do volume up, volume down. I'll press the side button once and it'll say shut down and then double tap. So volume up, volume down, press the side button once and then it'll say shut down and one finger double tap. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Pete. This is Pete. Yeah, Pete, go ahead. Just wanted to add, you can now restart your phone by asking Siri, just say, can you restart my device? She'll ask to confirm that you really want to restart and tell her yes, and it'll automatically turn it off and start it back up again, which is essentially, I guess, what the reboot is that Sri's talking about. Right. Yeah, Sri, very, I was very simple. Yeah, Sri, I was expecting you to uh, uh, suggest a forced reboot. Volume up, volume down, and then hold the side button in for about 20 seconds. This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. That's for next week. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. This is Let's, Desi. Desi, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that my problem with voiceover shutting down for its little nap or whatever it's doing um, happens to me a lot in the messages app. Like I'll be writing a message, I'll be dictating, and then I'll uh, stop the dictation, and then I go to check what I wrote, and it totally is gone. And then if I just sit there and wait for 30 seconds or whatever it is, it does come back on, but it's definitely happening to me fairly often in messages. So. Right. It's It's been a bug. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I don't, you know, since I can't imagine that that security update would have had anything to do with it, but I have not noticed that in the last two or three days where voiceover would stop. But that's, you know, that's, I doubt that's due to the security update. I don't Anybody? think it is because I think that I, um, that I had it happen on Sunday morning and I did my security update a couple of days ago. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just have to keep monitoring that. Who, who has another question? All right. So there there have been a, a number of the chat GPT type apps coming out. Is anybody, I heard a podcast on the perplexity. Uh, has anybody tried that one? It's, it's a free app and it does put you into the chat GPT four level. Has anybody tried that? No. No? This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. So I did try it. Um, I didn't put a lot of effort into it, but I just they asked some simple questions. And I noticed that it gave me a lot of links, um, you know, reference links to it, yeah. uh, which I didn't experience before. Um, if To me, my first 30-second you know, impression, I just thought it was, um, I didn't think it was, it was as good as ChatGPT. Okay. All right. Good. The, uh, yeah. So it, it's kind of like Siri where it says, I found this on the web or here's a link to something. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, so basically it just said like, and I asked why is the sky blue? And then it gave me some references to redirect. I didn't even try it, but I heard it say, you know, image one, you know, something, something link. Mm -hmm. And it gave me a bunch of those. And then it kind of gave me an outline of why is the sky blue? Okay. This is Desi. Desi, go ahead. I think that part of the reason for that, if I understand it, is that 
um, it also asks you if the information is accurate or inaccurate. And I think it's citing links. So you can go check out and see if you think that what the answer was that was given is an accurate answer or not. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 this is coming back into memory now, but I think with the uh, perplexity, it will give you. Uh, but that's like what one, I meant. In, in one, perplexity. Yeah, it'll give you like one, two, three, and with the links for each of them. Uh, like mm -hmm. I think it's the source for each of the right, different right. things, That's, and you yeah. you tap on the source that you want to get information from. And then when it says you know accurate or inaccurate or whatever, you you can double tap on that yeah. and and you know. Respond. So I guess yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the positive is it's free and it's the chat the GPT four. Let's go ahead and let's move on and pick up another question. Who who wants to who wants to ask the next next question? This is Helene. Helene, go ahead. Um, is it okay if I ask another question? Sure. Um, my question is about contacts. I will say to um, Siri, I'll just say call and I'll give the name of someone. And it said, I don't have a contact for that person. But then when I go into contacts and I do search, it comes up and it's right there. So then I tap on the phone number from the contact. But how come Siri can't find it? Okay, good. Good question. Who, who's, uh, who's got, who can respond to that? I know I've had that Jody? happen. Jody, go ahead. I haven't had that happen, but I've had the typical problem of, you know, what do you want to know about that person? And then I find you have to repeat the question. Yes. You have to repeat it a couple of times. So then I'll say, okay, you know, it'll say, you know, uh, uh, what do you want to know about Shri? And I'll say, well, call Shri, you know, and, and finally it will do it. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, it, she's a little persnickety now with, with 16. Okay, good. Thank you, Jody. Is Anybody else? Dot, go ahead. Um, maybe you should try and turn off the, shut down the phone. And maybe shut down the phone and restart the whole thing again. You can um, always. It always helps. Um, yeah. some, sometimes the phone, iPhone just got a glitch here and there after a long time of use switch. Mm. That's always a good place to start, isn't it, Dot? Yeah, yeah. Do that forced, do that forced reboot, and and uh, yeah. Or just yeah, just shut it down. Like press the volume down in the side button, and power yeah. down. Yeah, this is Helen. Helen, go I, ahead. I've done that, and then I got stuck in a bad loop where it actually shut down and it would not restart. And, and I had to call Apple Accessibility and I did a screen share with my iPad so she could see how dark <laughs> my screen and my home button on the SE3 2022. And eventually, I don't know if it's my vision, but she did say, keep holding down that power button for a longer time and then it did finally restart. This is Pete. Pete, go ahead. Just want to reiterate, ask Siri, and that'll give her another question to worry about because okay. she couldn't figure out your contacts. Just say, ask Siri to restart your phone, your device. You don't okay. have to worry about holding any buttons. It'll do it yeah. automatically. Yeah, I'm going to do that as soon as I can get to the Siri and, Siri and search. Search. Yeah, yeah, it's right under there. I just checked it, Helene. It's Siri and okay. search right on your settings screen. And right. your second option is um, listen for Hey Siri. Great. And thank right. you. Yeah, good. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Helene. Uh, another, uh, sorry, this is Pete. Yeah, go ahead, Pete. Just a, a quick thought. I've had problems, and maybe it's the way I'm creating my contacts, that if I don't get the first and last name in the right order uh, she doesn't recognize it so if I ask for 
uh, for Greg Rhodes. Is that your last name? Yes. <laughs> Wanted to be sure if I'm yeah. using you as an example. <laughs> That, uh, you know, it might be in there and, and I don't, you know, maybe she recognizes it as Rhodes Greg or something like that. that yeah, that would be a possibility. Yeah. yeah. This is Ed. Yeah, Ed, go ahead. Yeah, um, I've experienced, uh, like if I'm searching for a book in a book club and I give the full title and it'll, it can't find it, but if I just give it a partial of the title, then it brings it up. So possibly in contacts, if you just ask uh, for a first name, yeah, uh, or and instead of a full name, uh, you'll have more success. And I don't know if you can ask it to search for a partial name, um, but possibly, like that would also do it. Or you, right. or or you may get somebody else. <laughs> well, it'll give you an, uh, your options. So it'll bring up, like, yeah. if you have two people with the same first name, it'll bring up both, right? Give you, yeah, give you options of yeah. all your ads or yeah, <laughs> right. This is Shri. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I just want to say I think Helene brought up a great point. I think we all need to realize that we shouldn't always just rely on Siri to take us somewhere on the phone. We should also learn how to get around without it because in, in my opinion, Siri has not gotten better. In my opinion, it's gotten worse. And so it forces me to not rely on her to navigate and then try and navigate without using it. Right. It's always, it's always good to know how to do things manually. Jerry, go ahead. Uh, I don't know what call it was, but we were talking about this Siri mess thing. And somebody brought up a really good point. They said, uh, you know, when you invoke Siri for whatever, if you wait for about two seconds or three seconds before you start, it, it somehow engages better and is, is listening more or something. Right. Uh, I have not had much success with it, but I'm going to try to do that. And that may that may solve your problem. And, and you know, I agree with uh, I guess it was Ed that just said, you know, uh, sometimes there's nothing like uh, navigating. What I have done in addition to Siri is I will invoke, say I want to contact, I'll invoke the search field at the top of the thing you can dictate in that search field and it generally generally it brings up you know the 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 right people you know um and, and i do that in email too because i I've, I've recently recently massacred my 2000 emails or whatever it was and and it's it's really really fine it, it works well so just just a thought there yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, with the I think it was in iOS 16 when they uh, one of one of the versions of iOS 16 where you need to hold the side button in for a second or two before you start talking to Siri. Uh -huh. And the other uh -huh. thing that they did is they they changed the sound, so it's really hard to hear that Siri sound. Yeah, uh, I wish they would go back to the the way they had it before. But, yeah. Yeah, thanks everybody. This uh, is Jody. Jody, go ahead. Yes, you know that I I like the previous Siri tone better also, but it also used to take longer. So for example, it was a two tone, it took longer, where now it's a one tone. And I think the timing on it is still the same as it used to be when it was two tone. And I think that's why you have to pause before you say anything because the the, uh, the timing is still set the way it used to be. And there's also a lot of times when you're when you might not be able to reach Siri for whatever reason, maybe your cell uh, signal is down or whatever, so you can't rely on it. But also there's there's a uh, there's a, a Siri setting in accessibility. So if you go down, go to accessibility and go down the list, there's a, a, a Siri setting there, and you can turn H E Y S I R I on and off there also. Okay, I did not know that, or don't remember it. Yep. Okay, well, good. Thank you, Jody. Sure. Yeah. Okay, who's, who has another question for us? This is Jody. Jody, go ahead. Well, I wonder if anybody has been 
trying the new Voice Vista app, which is the new one of the new substitutes for Soundscape, because uh, I've been playing with it a little bit and um, I set up one marker, which it doesn't seem to pick up on, but then I set up other markers that it does seem to pick up on. I don't know if it's because it's a new marker or what, but I wonder if anybody else has been able to play with it and what they think of it. So we've got uh, Voice Vista and we've got Voice Open Vista. OpenScape. And I don't oh, know if yeah, there OpenScape are others. Beta. Yeah. Well, there's another one. There's there, uh, this, Jody. There's Soundscape okay. for everyone, which is also in beta, but it's a closed beta. It isn't out yet. Okay. So has so anybody be been, of them. has anybody played with Voice Vista or or OpenScape and have any feedback? I like OpenScape, yeah. Yeah. Anybody have any experience they want to share on those? I guess not. Yeah, Jody, it's just me and you. I, I, <laughs> I like I did, the, I like I the open skates. Yeah, I I set up several markers and did a a, a neighborhood route with OpenScape and it worked like a champ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Who has another question? Brian here. Brian, go. Yeah, I used I well I've been playing I played last week with uh, voice, voice Vista and I had the same problem as my marker sometimes I'll hear it sometimes I won't and I don't know why I only set up one marker so far mm. but it's yeah. a work in progress so you know like I'm sure yeah. they'll have an update yeah there yeah I think we're just we're just getting the beginning of of uh, what we'll eventually end up with we're yeah. in the early stages it's a lot I mean, voice vista is a lot like soundscape except there's some features that are not in there yet right i think i need to adjust by the amount of audio feedback i'm getting because boy that just it was driving me crazy i was just getting constant you know um beep beep beeps and constant noise but I, I assume there are settings you can change that and kind of uh, shut some of that audio feedback down. Yeah. Yeah. Any other? Right. Any other? Let's, let's let's get another question. Dot. This is Dot. Oh, yeah. Who? I'm sorry. Who was that? Dot and Desi. somebody else. Desi. Desi. Let's. Yeah. Dot. Let's go ahead and then we'll come to Desi. Okay. Uh, this is a question on a Braille screen input. Um, when I'm about to text somebody and then I'll, when I turn my rotor to braille screen input, and then I w at, as I was about to type, the audio recording feature came up and, and I can't do anything and I have to turn it back to, turn the rotor back to character or word or whatever out of the braille screen input mode. And I have to delete the audio recording or like two seconds of it or whatever. Sometimes it's very frustrating, you know. Uh, this is Chanel. Yes. Chanel, go ahead. Yeah, I have that problem too. And the only thing you can probably do is turn off the, it's that raise to speak feature, um, which oh. is a great feature, but it really does get in the way when you're, for me at least, when I'm trying to do braille screen input. Um, yeah. Herbie doesn't have that problem, but I'm glad it's not just me who has the problem. So, uh, yeah, um, and race to race to speed. Yeah, it's in mm. the if you go into messages settings, and I will verify that's correct because mm, um, it's and it's under the audio messages, but I'll verify that's correct. Mm. Okay. okay, thank you, Chanel. Okay, yep. good. Thanks, Chanel. All right. How about another question? Hey, this oh, is well, Desi. Desi. Yeah, Desi, come on. It's okay. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a just an overarching question for people about using GPS apps with your phone when you're out and about. Um, I am wondering if the majority of GPS, GPS apps that people have used work all right if you put them in your pocket and lock your screen, because what I'm concerned about is if I put my phone in my pocket without locking my screen, 
then sometimes other things get pressed that I don't need to get pressed just with the motion of my body when I'm walking. And so I've, I've been very perplexed about how to accommodate that. Okay. So can you, can you get your GPS uh, directions if your phone is locked and in your pocket? Is that the question? Right, right. Will it still tell you all the things that you set it to tell you? Right. Or um, is it just going to keep your screen locked and not say hardly anything or nothing, maybe? All right, good. Who, who can uh, uh, give Desi some feedback on that? Just Doc. Don, go ahead. Um, I don't, I'm not too good with the other GPS apps, but for Apple Map, you can definitely have your directions still going with the lock screen because I do that with, in the car, um, you know, with my friends or driving. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I don't want to turn it on all the time uh, to the, the, the drain and the battery. So I just, mm -hmm. I just have it locked and right. it still works. Yeah. Good, good. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I know I've, we've gone on trips and stopped to eat and I've had you know, the GPS directions on for a distant, you know, distant point. And we'll be sitting in the restaurant and all of a sudden <laughs> voiceover and the GPS is talking to me and I'm like, stop. stop. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's funny. And what right. do you use? Do you use Apple Maps too, or something? I, I, yeah, I use I've used Apple Maps and Google Maps and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was yeah, thinking they, particularly they, about um like um oh shoot good maps outdoors maybe and like some of the soundscape type apps. I think I think any of them are are you asking can you have them on lock screen? Yeah. Any of this? Yeah. yeah I, I don't I think you can. Pete, go ahead. Just want to circle back to I think it was Helene who was asking about the Siri. Her Siri wasn't list wasn't picking up her voice. Uh, and thank Jody for pointing out that there's also a Siri settings in the accessibility screen. Uh, there is where there's a setting under the accessibility Siri settings for always listen for Hey Siri off on. And that's where uh, you can leave your iPhone face down on a table or on a, you know, wherever your chair or something like that. And it will still hear your voice uh, whereas if the setting was off, you might it might not hear your voice. So, Helene, go into your accessibility menu, look for Siri there, and you'll find always listen for Hey Siri and be sure it's turned on, and then it's more likely to hear you. Okay. That's, yeah, good. All right. Anybody have any other feedback on the GPS and having your, having your phone locked when you're using GPS? Anybody else want to? Give us some feedback on that. All right, let's move on to another question. We're doing good. This is Chanel. Chanel. Yes, go. I did uh, verify that what you want to do is go to messages and then audio messages is a heading. It's way, way down. So you'll have to like uh, flick through a lot of things or use your rotor to go to headings and look for audio messages and the item you want is called raise to listen and it's a toggle so um, you can just double tap and turn it off this is dot great okay, okay I'll, I'll have it done thank you uh, good thank you dot and thank you chanel all right i have another question uh, this is helene helene go ahead if you have people are sending audio messages and sometimes they're very long. And if I say, um, read me my message, it will read part of that audio message. But the only way I can get the entire audio message is if I open messages and go to that person and then press on the audio, audio message and then it'll never delete it. I have to go through a whole rigmarole just to get it to go away but why is it when i say read my message it won't read the whole audio message it you have to be in messages okay is it is it reading the uh, the it, audio the, it's, play, it's playing it plays, the it plays part of yeah. the audio just a yes. part of the audio okay right. anybody have any feedback on that
I don't do the audio messages very often. Anybody? I, 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 but this people Pete. send it. Yeah, Pete, go ahead. I'm just, I'm just thinking, Helene, that uh, isn't that the case on on any message, whether it's audio or a text? If it's uh, if you're not opening, you're saying you're not opening. You don't want to open the thread, the person's whole screen. Uh, it, because I think sometimes it only reads a partial message. Some uh, like when it comes in as a notification, it'll only voiceover will only read the partial message, whether it's a text. It'll only well, certainly whether it's a text, it'll only read part of it. Yeah, depending on and how you have, have to said it, might be three yeah, lines or five lines the, or. You yes. have to go into the uh, uh, conversation uh, message thread of that person and tap on yeah. the individual message yes. before it will read the entire thing. So I don't know why it would be any different with an audio message than it is for a text. Okay. This is Sandia. Sandia, go ahead. Another, uh, you were saying it's hard to delete your audio messages. There is a setting that it will delete it immediately after you hear it. So it's a little bit of a dangerous setting because I didn't know that and I, once lost a very pretty song that somebody sang. So just be careful, but you can't have it so that once you hear it, it's gone. This is Brad. All right, Brad, go ahead. Yeah, I found the audio messages can be deleted just like any other message if I put my finger on it. And um, my rotor should always default to actions and flick either up or down till I hear delete and then double tap. And that gets rid of audio messages, just like regular messages. So I'm not sure how you've been trying it, but give that method a try. Okay. But yeah. But to, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Who has another question for us? Yeah, Greg, this, this, this is, is Jerry from, sorry. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to comment on that last question. That is when I hear an audio message, I usually say to Siri, read my messages. And it, it will read it'll read part of the audio message. And then I can I I can't say delete with Siri. And I have noticed the same thing that I think it was Helene was saying that it doesn't go away. You've got to go into the actual messages and either delete the message or uh or, or read the, you know, I think sometimes it reads the whole thing um uh but i have found that it, it won't go away unless you delete it you know either okay. that particular message or the whole conversation you know okay so all right thanks. good yeah thanks jerry all right and in iowa 17 i think it's going to give transcriptions of the audio messages so that may change things again all right. Who has another question for us? This is Ed. Ed, yeah. Um, a quick question. Is there a gesture for locking and unlocking the screen? Uh, I think you just tap on the side button. The tap side on the side button? Yeah. Which button? The, your, uh, what, what kind of phone do you have? Uh, uh, an SE3? SE3. Uh, somebody side, familiar side with the SE3? Just side tap button. on this. Yeah, just tap on the side button. Just press it. Just, just press and release it. Yeah. Oh. That'll that'll lock the phone. Oh, okay. And then to unlock it, you do the same thing, and then just uh, depending on the kind of phone you have, drag up from the bottom, and you're in business. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Thank you for the Brian. question. Brian, he's, go ahead. He's, he's got the he's got the SC three, so he's got the home button. You just okay. get your finger on the home right. button. Good, thanks, Brian. All right, David, come on. Yeah, this is David. Uh, on Safari, you know, it has that little tick 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 noise, like when it's like it's looking for a page or gets stuck on something. Right. And it, it seems like it's been more annoying lately. I don't know if it's. There's a, and you can, that, that, that's when the page is loading, it does that. And who can tell us where the setting is to turn that off? Pete. Is it under Safari, I guess? Or is there a way, there's a way to turn it? There is, yeah. Pete, what, what is, how do we get there? 
uh, go into your settings and I think it's under accessibility. There's an audio yeah, uh, category and you can go in there and it, there's something about uh, sounds for individual actions. I did a podcast on it. If you want to go over to blind, not, I don't want to plug blind abilities, but I did a whole podcast. This is my tapping. This was a, a year ago. Can almost. we? The, the yeah. tapping just, the uh, clicking just wouldn't stop. I remember complaining about that, and I remember is, your your podcast episode. Who can we get somebody to look that up real quick while we're while we're talking? Brad, go ahead. It's under uh, settings, accessibility, voiceover, and then I think it's under audio and haptics. Yeah, and you go to you'll you'll go down the list, and you'll find a listing of all kinds of different sounds or things. It's probably under Safari. I haven't looked in a long time, but I have noticed. I don't know if it's it probably since sixteen point five point one. If if I'm in Safari and I close the only tab open, it now sits there and makes that ticking noise, whereas it used to not do that. So that's a new come back a new thing yeah yeah oh good yeah i've noticed the ticking is more annoying than it was before and it's not sometimes it's not that i have a bad connection or anything it's just it just kind of gets stuck in a, in a loop and just tick, tick, tick. Pete. yeah Pete, Pete, David, if you're if you're over on the facebook um i bug today group i'll be happy to paste the link to that it's a quick demo it's like a five minute right. demo how to turn it off Oh, that's fine. I, I, I think I can find it. Thanks yeah, for okay. The Thanks. Yeah. All right. Though. All right. Thank you, guys. How about another question? All right. I don't. I don't know if anybody. Uh, I don't know if anybody caught it, but. Uh, uh, Jonathan Mosen on his latest podcast. Uh, if anybody's interested in the Drafts app, uh, uh, he did a real thorough um, uh, walkthrough on using that Drafts app, which is which is one. The nice thing about the Drafts app is that whenever you open it, it just opens to a blank document, and you can start typing. Um, real, real handy, and it I guess has a lot of features where you can do formatting and and anybody uh, is anybody dot dot go ahead uh, what is what is the name of the podcast so i can listen to it too please uh it's uh he changed the name it's living blindfully yeah okay it, yeah yeah it's a really good uh really living good uh, uh explanation of that uh, drafts app if you're looking for a, a text text app that's right. yeah anybody else this is brad brad go ahead yeah that drafts app um um podcast he did it's not the newest one it's back to two or three or four by now but yes it is uh more than thorough it is lengthy to say the least yeah like about an yeah. hour and a half long yeah it's, a, yeah, it's he's a pretty long thorough one. to say the least yeah all right who has another question This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. I also want to mention that I read an article that, which I didn't know, that if you don't use iCloud to store your photos, Apple was um, saving the photos for 30 days that you could access, and they're shutting that feature off and asking people move their photos to iCloud. So I just wanted to mention that if uh, no one, if anyone is not using iCloud to store their photos. Where, if you take a picture on your phone where was it going as an alternate um apple was hosting those pictures for 30 days okay it was a feature that uh, i didn't even know they had and they're shutting it down by end of the month hmm. okay good that's good to know about i thought i thought they just automatically went to uh icloud your icloud storage yeah these are those people that don't have icloud storage they don't use icloud storage Okay. So that was that was kind of their feature, and they're okay. phasing that out. Okay, got it. All right, good. Thanks, Ray. This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. If you're not backing them up to iCloud, don't they just stay on your device indefinitely? 
Because, I mean, I have mine set to back up to iCloud so that they can be gotten to from other devices, but I was always under the impression that even if you didn't do that, if I take a picture on my iPhone, that picture's on my iPhone forever until I delete it from the iPhone or the iPhone runs out of space, but yeah. that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's yeah, a good so point. I thought they're, you know, you're not going to lose it. It's on the device that took it, correct? Sorry? I think that's right, but Sri? Okay, I, th I think that's right, Brad. Yeah. All right, we have a minute or two, I think. This uh, is Sri. Sri, go ahead. Yeah, I think the benefit of that is if you have multiple devices, you have access to those photos and other devices versus it being stored locally on the phone. Okay. I think that's what that feature was used for. All right, good. Thank you, guys. All right, we have time for one more question, one or two more questions. Who wants to ask another question? This is Karen. Karen, go ahead. Can I ask a Gmail question? Sure. I'm having trouble um, creating Gmail folders. I have a million of them, so I'm very experienced in knowing how to do it. But now I'm going to do it. Nine times out of 10, it will not, well, I don't know, maybe 50% of the time, I'm exaggerating, it will not show up. And then I'll do it again, it won't show up. I was trying to do one earlier. I put in the information three times for the same folder and it's just not there. Okay, are you clicking on the save button in the upper right-hand mm -hmm. corner? Okay, anybody mm -hmm. have any I ideas? I think there's a save button. Or save and then done. Yeah. Okay. And anybody have any any uh, thoughts on that? And those folders just are not showing up, correct? Nope. No, they're just refused to be created. Hmm. Okay. This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to guess here. Correct. Does it take some time for Gmail to? It's Gmail, right? And does it take some time for it to propagate through? Um, normally, no. It's Karen. Normally, no. I've done a million of them, and normally they're there immediately. And I hit done, wipe down, yeah. and I'll see the folder. And sometimes I got to go out of my email and come back in, and then it's there. But now it's just not there at all. And I've done it multiple times trying to create one particular folder, and it just refuses to be created. Huh. Yeah, and you're on Wi-Fi when you're doing this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. Um, are you using the, the mail app, the native mail app, or are you using the Gmail app? Native mail app. Do you have this problem if you go to the Gmail app and create the folders? I never went to the Gmail app. I never used it. Yeah. I can try. Yeah, my my best guess was it was just taking time for it to get to the to the server and back to your phone. But all right, Sandia, we ready to move on? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, all covered right. a lot of ground once again. Thank you, Greg. And now, anybody that didn't get to say hello the first time around, please say who you are and where you're from. Anybody? This, this is Helene from Woodstock, New York. Hey, welcome, Helene. Angelo in Ottawa. Angelo. Hey, Kathy from Tulsa. Hey, Kathy. Hey. Hello. Anybody else? All right. Okay. Well, very good. We're glad y'all are here. Uh, so now it's time for our reveal for the iBug Night at the Virtual Movies for this Friday at 8 p.m. 7.30 social time. And with those clues, I don't know how to characterize them anymore, but we'll just see how they are. All right. Okay. iBug Guy, are you out there?
Yes, 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 I'm back again. Very good. Glad <laughs> you're back. Characterize the questions as je ne sais quoi. Oh, wow. Since when did you learn French? Oui, oui. <laughs> Stick oh, to English. Wow. Is that a clue? All right, all right, let's get down to it. All right, we got some fabulous clues tonight. I can't believe how great these clues are. I don't know who wrote them, but they sure are something else. All right, rules. Number one, you get one guess per clue. Number two, you have to say your name first before and be recognized before you can guess the title. Got it? Good. And you know what? Does anyone know what puce is? Puce? I think that's another French derivative. Puce. It's a color. It's a color. Yes, Celine. What color is it? A purple. Yeah. Okay. I'll give Kinda. it. <laughs> Brownish purple, dark brown. Yeah. Sticky. Brownish purple. I never guessed, but it's anyway. not pretty. But it but it originated from puce, which is French for a flea. One of those things that are on your pets and maybe on you too, but who knows? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Isn't that the color it makes when you smush them? <laughs> so I think, yeah, when they bite you and you get those little bites and they turn that dark brownish purple. <sighs> anyway, puce. Yeah. We digress. Right. We digress. We're taking all the we're taking all the fun away from being blind. Please. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right. So here we go with Wow. He seems to be getting longer and longer. Yeah, I know. All right. He's gonna, he's gonna pass out. I know. Here we go. I can't breathe him. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's going to believe you if you injure yourself while giving me clues. The clues. Clue number one. You have to get workman's comp. Our film this week takes place in a location where one of the recent national blind conventions was held. Well, what are the odds? Uh -huh. Oh, he's got to be Houston. Got to be Houston. Yeah, yeah it ain't Schomburg. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All right, all right. We need a film title. Any guesses? This Marie. Marie. Apollo 13. Apollo. Ooh, good one. Mm -hmm. It's good. Very, very good. Marie, you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, Houston has a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We oh, have a problem. Okay. All right. Any other guesses before we move on to clue number two? Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Kathy. Terms of endearment. That starts in Houston. Some <laughs> dogs. Whose dog is that? Dog, dog. dog three. That is a yeah, wow answer. We do. <laughs> we haven't seen that, have we? This is Shree. One of these days, mm. Kathy. Okay. <laughs> okay, Shree. Get done with all these very uh, boys movies. Very, very. Untouchables? Untouchables. Ooh, Shree's moved it back up near Schomburg. And <laughs> that's the correct answer again. Thank you, Shree. All right, we're going to move on. Okay. Go, go, go. We want to move on. We're going to move on and you guys can Pete and then uh, Karen or was that Karen? Yeah. Okay. We'll get the first choice. Clue number two. The main character 
is a hard drinking, ego driven man who recently broke up with a young assistant. Pete, you have first guess. Uh, my guess ain't real good. I was, I was wondering if there's a movie about the Astros scandal. <laughs> <laughs> so I withdraw my answer. <laughs> uh, you know what I think about that one? No, apparently not. Huh? <laughs> no such movie exists. Yeah. <laughs> Punch in the face. Then. All yeah. right, all right. Karen, take a stab at it. Oh, I gave away a clue here. Say that one more time. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw <laughs> oh, Massacre. <I> <laughs> wow. Mean cool. Warmer, warmer, warmer. It's Texas. All right. Any other guesses? We're going to move on to clue number three. In, in the opening scene. We see him moving smoothly, smoothly. I like that word. It's like pew, smooth. <laughs> a group of people. He knows everybody's name. And they behave towards him in a way that signifies his importance. I'm not going to read that again, so too bad. <laughs> Smooth operator knows everybody and they know him. Ooh, it sounds like cheers. <laughs> Everybody sing. knows your name. Don't sing, don't sing. This is Shree. All right, Shree. Man on fire. Man on fire. Mm. Ooh. That's a good movie with that guy that we've never shown before, I don't think. We're going to have to put in some of his movies. All right, good try, Shri. Moving on. Well, you're going to encourage other people, you know, definitely just try have to unmute, say your name, and you can be part of the, you know, guessing. So. We got 35 people out there, and I've only heard about five people answering. So jump in there anytime. Yeah. You get extra points and extra gifts if you're a first time guesser. All right, moving on to clue number four. 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 A man is murdered. Dun, dun, dun. I didn't... <laughs> Sound effects. Okay. A suspect is captured and he's covered with the victim's blood. And. Yeah. The headlines call him the Butcher Boy of St. Mike's. Oh, God. That's good. Give it away, I'm sure. When are we going to see a light romance? <laughs> right. There we go. We need a rom com. This is David. David's got it. I can feel it in my toes. Go, David. Is it the fugitive? The fugitive! We've already seen that one, baby. Oh, Brad, were you guessing? No. Oh, okay. You were just making a witless comment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not nice. All right, Brad. Not nice. <laughs> Anybody else want to guess? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brad. He's on my staff. I don't pay any attention to her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to the fifth and final clue. Hey, go, go, go. But did he do it? A psychologist examines 
examination suggests oh. there was another person in the room. There is a lot more to it than it seems. Mm. What a clue about Chicago. Well, uh, guys. Last clue. Anybody going? Going. Mr. Brooks. And oh. Brooks is going to jump Brooks. in there with the correct answer. Go, Brooks. How about seven? Seven is in the ballpark, but we've seen that one too, I think. Good try, Brooks. <clears throat> this is Shree. Um, Shree. Jagged Edge. Jagged Edge is very close, too. Good try, Shree. Thank you. Plum, come again. Come again. Uh -huh. My hedge trimming. All right, it looks like we've stumped the audience. No bonus clue? Uh, okay, let me pull one out of my, I mean, of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't encourage him. <laughs> Sorry I asked. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, three. <laughs> really? Three bad three. <laughs> <laughs> the smooth operator is a good song. lawyer looking for lots of publicity, public publicity in the limelight of this high-profile case. Always picking on lawyers. All right. All right. <laughs> Golly. Easy target. We've stuck them. Our film feature this week is Primal Fears. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Richard yeah, Gere. right. I was going to say, that Richard Gere. To ride on the tip of our tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Primal Fear. I was going to ask, is, this, is it with Richard Gere? It, Richard Gere, <laughs> it is. And. It's one I've never seen. The Archbishop of Chicago is Isn't he in Tibet? <laughs> it's actually a good movie. You can put the gift away until next week, especially since we didn't even have a gift for him this week. <laughs> yes, I did. I had a gift. It was a recycled gift, but okay. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Primal you want to say good night? Mr. McCullough. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. There go. Thank you. Hence oh. the band, Chicago. Ha. Ah. Yeah, Chicago. Better late than never. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. McCulloch, and everybody that participated in guessing. Uh, so, now, so just in case you missed it, the movie is Primal Field starring Richard Gere, and I think it is rather a long movie from 1996. Join us this Friday for that movie. Okay, now... We are going to do our iBug Bites segment where we feature a tip or trick that we think will make your life easier. And then after that, we will come back and do some more questions. Greg, are you ready, Greg? Y yes, ma'am. Go ahead and are you play it? And, yeah, and we're going to we'll roll it. Say roll it, Roll Greg. it. <laughs> roll it, Greg. <laughs> You're so well trained. <laughs> Here we go. For tonight's iBug Bite, I wanted to do a quick demo of the Notify Me feature in the Mail app. Uh, this was a new feature that was added in iOS 16, so you will need to be running iOS 16 for this feature to work. 
Uh, Notify Me is just a real handy tool that uh, allows you to quickly access emails that uh, you know you're going to want to refer back to. For example, uh, I had an email uh, with details about a uh, AC heat uh, service contract. I knew I'd want to refer back to it uh, over the next six months or so. And so I did the Notify Me feature. And what that does is it places a copy of that email in a special threaded notifications folder. Uh, Other examples, uh, I had some uh, store coupons that I added uh, to the wallet app, but just as a backup, because I I thought I might need to refer back to those emails, uh, I did the Notify Me feature on those as well. Uh, So in order to, in order to, uh, do that notify me uh, designation on an email. Uh, I've already opened uh, my mail app on the phone and I should be in my list of emails. Dictate messages on red, great. I do usually by demo of notify me. All right, so I sent myself an email to demo this. Now with the email unopened, I can do a one finger triple tap. Preview from Okay, that brings up a contextu- contextual menu. If I flick right four or five times. Reply all, but forward, but mark, button, notify me, button. Notify me, I want to double tap on that. Dismiss context menu, button. Okay, voiceover prompts me to double tap to dismiss the context menu, so I'll do that. Dismiss context menu. All right, and now I want to go back to the previous screen that has my listing of mailboxes. So I can do that by doing a four finger tap at the top of the screen and double tapping on the back button, or I can just do a two finger scrub gesture, which is what I'll do. All inboxes, one unread message button. All right, so I'm at the top of my listing of mailboxes and it said all inboxes. So I'm going to flick right through my inboxes for each of my mail accounts. iCloud, one, sudden link, Gmail, no, Outlook, button, G-R-H-O-T-E-F, thread notifications, no unread messages, button. All right, and I hear the thread notifications folder. So if I double tap on that. Selected, messages, great, IDUG by demo of notify me feature, 1, 26 p.m. All right, so I've, I've, uh, a copy of that email has been put it in, put in my thread notifications uh, folder. This is just a quick way to get to those emails that you might want to refer back to. Now, if that thread notification, threaded notifications folder does not show up in your list, then if you do a four finger tap at the top of this screen, you'll hear the edit button. If you double tap on that, it's going to give you a list of all the mailboxes that could appear in your listing of mailboxes. Uh, So you can flick right until you hear threaded notifications. If VoiceOver tells you that's not, if it doesn't say selected, then you want to double tap on it. And that will add it to your list of mailboxes. And that's true for all of the other uh, mailboxes like If you don't have an all inboxes uh, in your list of mailboxes, then you can just double tap on that until VoiceOver says it's selected, and that means it's been added to your list of mailboxes. So I hope this demo has been helpful for you, uh, and I hope you find this feature real handy. All right, Greg, thank you very much. So now we will open it up. All right, does anybody have any questions on the Notify Me feature? All right, go ahead, anybody? This is Terry. Terry, go ahead. Um, It it sounds 
complicated to do, but I'm thinking it really is not. And so it's just a matter of really, am I right, just following the prompts as you go and and the more you do it, you know, anything's easy when you know how kind of thing. So basically, it's just a matter of once you start out, you just follow the prompts, right? So there's nothing you right. have to really memorize. Right. It's really it's really very simple. I, I added mm -hmm. that end because I think Sri and I were playing with with one of those features early on. And he was telling me, I'm not getting that notifications mailbox. And so we discovered that if you, you had to go into edit, but for the notify me itself, you just go to your email, uh, unopened email, triple tap on it and flick right to notify me and double tap and it's done. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, and then you can go back into your list of mailboxes and you just find the threaded notifications mailbox and it's there. I use this all the time. It's, I mean, there are a lot of different ways to do things, but Boy, this is just a quick and easy way for any of those emails that you think you're going to want to go back to. It's a quick way of, yeah. and and I can't tell you how many times that saved my life. You know, just being able to find those emails, and you could do search, you could search your mailbox, but this is just a quick way to to get to it. This is Dot. Dot, go ahead. So you have to create a, a notification folder. Uh, no, it, it it no that it, should set up automatically. Set up automatically for yeah, you. Yeah, but in case it does, if in case it doesn't, then you'd need to go into edit and and make sure it's selected. No, oh, okay. And uh, this, when, is, this oh, yep. Yeah. Sorry, Who, was that go Vincent? Ahead, Vincent? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait until he finishes. Oh, okay. I'm just wondering. Uh, this is that. Uh, I was just wondering the, um, the notify. The mode that notified me. Uh, is that gonna let me know if somebody answered that email? No, no. It just strictly oh, puts like it. No, no, no. It doesn't. It sounds like it should notify you, but no. It 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 just puts it in a folder. Yeah. So you can ref you can go open that that. Uh, that mail it puts it in a mailbox and then you can go open that mailbox and find yeah. any of the emails that you've you've uh, done the notify me uh, okay designation got it. you got it yeah Thank other you. other questions this is ed. Vincent. okay i got vincent and who else was at first dan ed, ed oh ed i'm sorry ed go ahead and then we'll come to yeah. vincent does, does that um does that automatically open a file in your email uh like when you bring up your open your email is there not a notification in there of that when that happens uh well notify me is a specific feature that you'd uh, yeah yeah i understand that but yeah. i thought i i think i i think i inadvertently did that <laughs> and okay. uh, and it it came back up in my emails when i when i opened my my right. email I think that's a different, there, there are several, there's a follow-up and there's a remind me. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think maybe, maybe the remind me that you're talking about the maybe, notify yeah. me just puts it in a, puts it in a mailbox, separate mailbox. Okay. It must've been remind me. Uh, that's yeah, right. I bet okay, that's thanks. it. Okay. okay. And yeah. Who was, who else had a, was it? Uh, this is Vincent. Vincent. Uh, good. Yeah. Okay. What I was going to ask is, you know, what the difference is between uh, notify me and remind me. I use remind me, and uh, it adds the uh, the uh, the uh, folder right. to my mailboxes. So, right. what is the difference? Or, yeah, or why, remind which on on remind me, it prompts you to say uh, to give a time of when you want to be reminded. It'll be like this mor this afternoon or tomorrow morning, or or you can set a specific time, but it does. Remind me, follow up, uh, notify me. All of those create separate mailboxes in your mailbox listing. But the remind me will actually come back and, and remind you at a specific time. Uh, I like the notify me because it just puts that, that email in a mailbox. And for anything that I have questions about, you know, that I thought I'd need to refer back to, it's just there. Doesn't go away. When you delete it from the notify me, then it will also delete it from your inbox. This is Sri. Sri, go ahead. So for someone like me who's got about ninety thousand emails, if you notify, if you set this up, 
can you have multiple folders or will it all just be in one folder? Uh, it, there, it would just be in the one notify me. I mean, what I think what you, you're probably thinking you'd want to do is just set up multiple folders, um, uh, which you could certainly do to set up different folders for different categories. But yeah, the notify me is just one folder. And does it list chronological order if you have multiple, if you put multiple in that folder? Like, yeah. does it say the, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, it's chrono order. Great, thank you. Uh huh. You bet. Anybody else? Sandia, back to you. All right. Very cool. Again, another cool feature that will help us not lose track of an important email. Thank you, Greg. All right. Who has a new question? Somebody new that hasn't had a turn. That's Linda. Us. Go ahead. Yeah, Linda. Um, I just heard y'all talking about um, where you back up your photos to um, iCloud. Um, I don't really share my photo photos with any other device. So should I even have my photos on iCloud? And if I unclick iCloud, will they disappear from iCloud and just stay on my phone? All right. Great question. Any people using photos with iCloud? What to do? This is Brad. Go, Brad. Yeah, if you if you go into your iCloud settings, which I can't do because my name is dimmed, um, I will. Uh, they just get removed from iCloud. They stay on your device. So if you you know if you took them on your device. They're going to stay there. Okay. They're not going great. anywhere. Thank you. Hi. Great. Linda. Thank you. All right. Who else? Any question? Problem? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, this is Vincent. Go ahead, Vincent. Uh, I just uh, 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 got an SE 2022 uh, uh, phone and uh, everything was backed up. And uh, when I uh, looked for one of the applications, which is the uh, BART application, and looked for the books that I had downloaded, uh, all of them were gone. So I, uh, so I guess uh, th this is uh, uh, part of the BART application that it is, uh, uh, it, 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 I would have to download them again every time, or is it something wrong that I did? All right, great this question. Jody. Vincent, who's that? <clears throat> Jody. Go, Jody. Yes, that is a feature of BART. That's why I like to leave books in my wish list because you know, if they're not downloaded yet, you have the option of what device you can download them to. You can go to get books and go to recent downloads and you know, or recent books that you've gotten and you can go through that list and you can download them again if you want. Uh, yes, they, that, that's, they, that, that, that's, 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 what, that's what that's what I did. Uh, so actually, uh, uh, I, I, I had I had duplicates in my iPad and my phone. So now I'm I'm, I have a, a cleaner slate, but I no, didn't realize. It's not, it is a feature of BARD, and I think that they're hoping in the future to, to, um, to fix that or to change that, but as it is now, there's nothing wrong with your phone. Or there's nothing, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. That's just the feature of BARD. So just curious, <laughs> Vincent, how many books did you have in your wish, in your book list, bookshelf? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I I think I well possibly about a hundred something like that. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but the the thing is that I some of them I had I had duplicates in my okay. uh, uh, my, my iPad. So so now so you're all cleaned up. My all iPad right. has more than them. This is Greg. Up. Thank you, Vincent. Go, Greg. Yeah, with the with the Bard app, if I fast forward. 
if I'm reading a book and I fast forward and go past 15 minutes, if I go to the 30 minutes, then a lot of times it just keeps going. I can't stop it. It just goes to the end of the book. Is anybody, I assume that's a, an issue with the app, but it's, it's kind of annoying. Then I have to go back and figure out where the heck I was. Anybody had that issue? All right. Anybody fast forward? Why are you fast forwarding through the book anyway, Greg? You should be reading Well, because I go to sleep and then I'm trying to figure out where I am. And I, <laughs> it's like, I've heard this before, so I'll fast uh, forward. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like to help? Vincent? Yeah, go Vincent. Uh, yeah, that happens uh, to me too. And many times I have problems with that. So what I do now is I, I, go, I, I instead of uh, fast, uh, you know, forwarding or rewinding, I go to previews uh, um, and uh, uh, it will not, you know, bring me back exactly to where I want it to be. But usually that's a better option because then if I have fallen asleep many times, I didn't listen to the last 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, of the book and uh, uh, you know it brings me back closer to where I'm I'm supposed to be but otherwise it's just a guessing game you know many times it's I go like five minutes at a time and spend more time go doing that than if I had <laughs> all right so I guess the lesson to be learned and I yeah I fall asleep too and I use the bookmark feature so before I start reading for the night I just you know put a bookmark and then that makes it easier because we know we're going to fall asleep, right? Who are we kidding? So this is Brad. Go Brad. Two words, sleep timer. Yeah, that too. That too. Michael. Just... Go. Yes, sir. Yeah. Another uh, issue or feature. I'm not sure which one it is of Bard. The latest uh, update I don't know when it occurred, but I haven't updated a book in a couple of months. And so I went to download the, another book this weekend and I was having issues getting the book. Sometimes I could get the book. And then once I started the player, it says you're not authorized to read this book and did all kinds of different things. But anyway, it turns out that now this latest uh, version, uh, if you have a VPN, it will not work properly. Bard Mobile doesn't work properly. So I had to, you know, temporarily turn off my VPN and then everything worked just fine. And I turn it back on and the player will read once the VPN's on. But uh, if you try to do any, you know, searching or wish listing or anything, it, uh, you'll get a usually a failed message to perform. So just remember, if you got a VPN, turn it off before you try to do any of those operations. All right. Thank you, sir. For helpful tip. Okay. Who else? New question. This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Uh, I'm noticing on the past few days that when I um, go to look at emails on my phone, uh, I get a, a ping message uh, to, when I go to look at unopened emails on my phone, I get a ping message or a ping notification on my watch like the one you get uh, if you uh, get a text message only it's a little bit softer. And I'm wondering, I've not heard of that, but is that a function of iOS 16 now? So your watch is kind of telling you, yeah, you're, you're in a message that you, you, know, you haven't looked at yet. It's an unread message on your phone and here it is. And... All right, everybody. Getting notifications on your Apple Watch of unread emails. <clears throat> okay, I guess you're the only one, Tarian. You're the lucky one. Well, I guess that could be helpful. Could be a little confusing, but you said it's a lower tone, so. 
it's it's the same pitch, but it's a softer in volume. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to see if there's anybody else. Nobody else seems to be experiencing that. So thank you for sharing that weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. All right. The more you use these things, the more we discover. All right. Who else? Greg. Oh, Greg. Do we have, are, are there any people on the call that are using VPNs and what, what VPN are you using? All right. And are, are they really, yeah, are Brad. people feeling like they're really necessary? Go Brad. I use, I use one called encrypt.me. I've been using it for years. Um, $99 a year, unlimited data. Um, I mean, some of them have a limit on how much data they'll they'll do. It's unlimited and it's unlimited devices as well. Um, a snake. Anyway, it's a pretty good VPN. Uh, I've never, ex I'm going to have to pay attention to that BART thing. I have mindset. First of all, it doesn't engage when I'm at home. But if I'm not on my home Wi-Fi, it engages. And um, it's on my, my phone. It's on my laptop, my MacBook Pro. So that it'll it'll automatically connect. Um, it um, I have it set so that it makes it look like I'm in Dallas, no matter where I am. So I'm gonna have to play with that uh, Bard app thing and see if I'm affected by what Michael's experiencing. Because uh, maybe if mine's engaged, but it says I'm in Dallas, no matter where I am, it might be just fine. I don't know. All right, thank you, Brad. All right, okay, who's next? Anybody? This is Shree. Go, Shree. Um, I use Norton VPN. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend is uh, if you're going to get a VPN, try not to use the freebie ones. Um, I would suggest, you know, spend a little money there. You can find some pretty inexpensive ones, but uh, try not to use the freebie ones. Okay. Yeah, this is Brad. Go, Brad. Yeah, I would never use a free one. I mean, the whole point of a VPN is to keep your internet activity private and when you use a free one uh, you the reason it's free is because the company that is providing it to is harvesting your internet activity so that they can sell it i mean there's an old saying if you're not paying for a product you are the product and that is very very true on a vpn i mm -hmm. always see these emails what's a really good free vpn there's no such thing if you're not paying for it it's not worth having it all right Tell me how you really feel, Brad. So. Hey, sorry, okay. I was holding. Oh, I won't hold back next time. <laughs> okay, who's next, Terry? Michael. Oh, Michael, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I agree with both of their comments about the free VPN. Uh, so I use Express VPN, and yeah, it's about a hundred dollars a year. Same, I think they're all. That's kind of going great for most of the paid ones. Uh, and I use it set in Dallas also. I any occasionally I get some ads and there are there are some local Dallas ads that I get. So that's kind of strange. But anyway. But it uh, yeah, seems to work pretty well. And uh when I'm out of the country, then I can always VPN back to someplace in the US to continue getting you know stuff that I would normally get in the US. Okay, this is some, you know, maybe you guys said this. So, um, so th would this be in lieu of like when you go to like a doctor's office and you use their network, you wouldn't have to do that? Is it the same thing? That's Wi Fi. That's different. It's Brad. Brad. No, it's not this. It, it, you still need to connect to their Wi Fi, but it just makes you what you're doing a bit more secure. I mean, I have unlimited data on my my cell phone plan, so I've gotten to where I don't bother connecting to Wi-Fi's at places like the doctor's office because, you know, unless I'm not getting any cellular service, I don't bother because generally my cell service data is better and it's certainly private. Okay. You know, you never know who's accessing your data when you're on a public okay. Wi-Fi. All right. Well, it's better to ask. Okay, thank you. This is Terry. Go, Terry. 
Um, I've always been hesitant to use VPNs because I'm feeling like they're allowing you to have access to things that the things that you're wanting access to don't want you to have access to under specific circumstances. Like if you're out of the country, you know, you can't listen to your favorite radio station because it it doesn't stream in to these other countries. So am I am I thinking about VPNs in the wrong way? Are you circumventing something by using them kind of like those speed trap things that you have on your car that notify you when the police are around and that kind of thing. This is Shri. Go Shri. So, so basically what happens is it, it's kind of like the opposite of what you were trying to say there, Terry. So let's say you're in Europe and like Michael said, if you want to have access to something in the U.S., your, your network in overseas is going to say, hey, we're only supporting these network that's here what a vpn does is it allows you to create a link or a network address that's in let's say in texas so that you can access the things back home when you're overseas what a lot of people will do with vpn nowadays is you'll hear it if you want to watch netflix and the show is in europe but it's not available in the u.s you can create a a vpn client setup so that you're accessing the network in Europe so you can watch the Netflix shows that are being presented in Europe. Okay. Does that make some sense? So I guess their question is, is it legal? And it sounds Absolutely. like it is yes. legal. It's legal. Okay. Yeah. There's, okay. there's no, mm-hmm. uh, there's no rules behind. Now what happens is these like Netflix, they're getting smart because they're looking at the IP address to say, okay, well, you're really not, where you're supposed to be and they could technically you know not have act not give you access but it's perfectly legal to mark your address anywhere that you want like i'll do that if i'm traveling okay so so terry Ann, if they come and take you away in cuffs call shri okay 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 <laughs> all right Very i'll just good. this Thank is shri you. go shri i'll just say it wasn't me <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> All this, right, no guarantee. Go, Greg. Okay. Yeah, let me one more follow up. So, if I do, I need a, a separate VPN for my desktop and one for my iPhone. Would my That's wife Brad. be covered on the same i the same uh, uh, VPN account? Go, Brad. So no, you shouldn't. I mean, like the one I have allows me to be. Technically, it allows me to be allow any device in my family, which basically that just means me and my wife, um, because we're a small family. But um, so any any of my devices, and I have three or four of them, and she's got three, you know, her Mac, her iPhone, her iPad, and so we're all signed in to the same user, you know, user account on the Encrypt.me VPN service. And that's all within what I'm paying for. They have other um, packages or subscription packages that are are smaller, but I pay for the the one that's like I said, unlimited data, and anyone in my family can use it. And like I said, ninety nine dollars a year. That's a pretty good price. That's less than ten dollars a month. So, and like right. Michael said, he's paying for Express VPN. They're comparable. Yeah. Thank you. All right, very good. Let's think. Great, great topic there. Thank you very much. New topic, new question, new problem. Who would like to go? This is Jody. Go, Jody. I just wanted to comment, Terry. You said that um, you're limited on streaming radio. That I listen to streaming radio from all over, all around the world. I listen to CBC Toronto and Ireland and England and. You know, there's really no limit when it comes to streaming radio uh, as to where you are. This is Terry. Go ahead. I do have a friend in Austria who can't, without a VPN, he can't listen to WBBM in Chicago, which he likes to do because he was, you know, originally lived in this area at one point. 
So that's when well, that's, a VPN comes, comes in a, handy for him. Uh, is, this is Jody. Uh -huh. is, is that is that on uh, TuneIn or one of the streaming services? I know you know there's there's a global. There's a lot of uh, ways to do it. So this is Terry. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. I just know that he he. However, he's tried to do it. He has to have a VPN in order to make it happen. Okay. In Austria. Okay. So. All right. Well, good luck. Hopefully, he can work around it. All right. Next. Who's next? Anybody buy any fun things on Prime Day? Things that you shouldn't have bought? This is Chris. Yes, Chris. I have a question about iCloud. Going back to that question, uh -huh. I don't use it. But a long time ago, I have a faint memory of trying to use it and syncing up like contacts or notes or messages. And then when I tried to unsync it, it's like everything disappeared, was deleted from not only iCloud, my iCloud account, but also from my phone. Is is that not how it works anymore? Or, you know, can can you just simply unsync and everything's fine and everything's still on your phone? This is Brad. Go, Brad. When you unsync, or let's say, for example, your contacts, if you go into your iCloud settings and uncheck contacts, a box is going to pop up. It's going to ask you, do you want to remove the contacts that are on your phone or do you want to leave them as they are? Which means they'll be on your phone, but they won't, will no longer be syncing with iCloud. So they won't, any changes you make won't upgrade, update to iCloud and anything that happens on another device that is syncing with iCloud will not update on your phone. So it's possible that you answered that question wrong. This is Chris. Oh, Chris. Yeah, it wasn't asking that kind of stuff. It was just, if I said I wanted to unsync, it was it said something like everything's going to be deleted. It wasn't, it didn't give me any choices, but, but I remember. Mm -hmm. This is Shree. Go Shree. I think that's kind of what Apple kind of told me that if I was deleting a picture that's in iCloud, if I delete it, it's gone. If because you delete a picture from where? iCloud? iCloud. If the pictures are stored in iCloud, you delete it, oh. it's gone. And it's not on your phone. If you, anymore? Wait, if, if you delete it from iCloud, yeah. it's gone. Not un stop syncing with iCloud. There's a difference there. Okay. Okay. This is Karen. Go, Karen. Yes, I got that same message too that the lady got just. If you unsync it, uh, remove from iCloud, everything will, it will be deleted. And I got scared and didn't do it. Yeah, there's a lot of it. It just wasn't clear. Okay. This is... Uh, yes? This is Marty. Go, Marty. Uh, new question, or are we still on yeah, this one? Yeah, uh, are we done with that, Chris? Um, so hopefully you can try it and see if something happens. <laughs> this is Chris. Go. Yeah, I'm still unclear. I because I'm, I'm like Karen, I, it's, it doesn't, it's not, it's not clear and it's ambiguous. And I thought years ago, I tried that and it didn't end well. So that's why I don't even use iCloud, but it's not just this or that. It's, it, it's not nice and cut and dry and it doesn't just unsync it and remove it from iCloud and leave everything in your phone. That, that, that has not been my experience in the past. Okay. So but you, you tried it written and Karen sounds like she's tried it recently and it's still happening. Right, Karen? This is Karen. No, I was going to do it but I was scared when they said okay. that. Okay, okay. All right, Brad. well, then we'll, yeah, Brad. Yeah, I recommend you sync them with iCloud. If something happens to your phone or you get a new phone, when you sign into iCloud, boom, all that stuff is just there because it downloads it from iCloud. Right. Or else you are most likely not going to transfer it to your new phone. If it's not in iCloud, you know, it's own, you know, Oh, Never mind yeah. about the confusion on this question, but if it's not synced with iCloud, it's only on your phone. And it's you Chris. get an, another phone or you lose your phone or it breaks or falls in the swimming pool, who knows what, um, you've lost everything that's on it if it's not syncing to iCloud. All right. Go, Chris. Yeah, I have separate backups. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. We will, I want to check oh. that out. I mean, I know I've seen something like that when doing music stuff, but it's been a while. So 
All right, go, Marty. Um, I just got well, on Prime Day. I got replaced my Bose earbuds because the old ones, the right one was, the left one was dependent on the right one, and the right one chose not to work anymore. So I got the second generation, which are both independent. And I'm using them, by the way. How do they sound? You sound good. Okay, but my question is, um, they're connect- I'm using the Bose Music app, and there's a couple things that I'm not clear on. It says, like, um, shortcuts. But I don't see how to get a list of shortcuts to change. Like, it had, you know, left shortcut, like, you can assign a shortcut to each earpiece, oh, I guess. okay. So basically, and, your question is about the Bose Music app. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And Very also, much. also the other thing I don't like, and that's I, I, you cannot get a reading of the charging case uh, charge level. Only the left and right buds. Okay. So. Anybody have any experience with the Bose Music app? Okay, Marty, is this like your 200th pair of headphones, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's Close. one more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody? Michael. Go, sir. Yeah, I uh, bought some stuff on uh, Prime Day, the last day at the 11th hour, literally the 11th o'clock, <laughs> in wherever Pacific time. And I guess I must have had too many margaritas. I ended up spending about $500, and now I'm sending in returns of Aww. stuff. <laughs> this is Shree. I totally ordered that I didn't need. Like, I ordered two umbrellas because I heard it was in <laughs> New York. And I don't, I've got so many umbrellas laying around. And I don't even know why I ordered umbrellas, but. <laughs> I read an article that said that the yeah. weird 22 gadgets that you need for travel. And so I just went down that list and started ordering everything off that list, too. It turns out I didn't need half of those either. A couple of them were nice, though. You didn't keep anything that you bought? Yeah, I kept about half the things. Half the things. It's called impulse shopping. Okay. You know, I found out Amazon doesn't really want the stuff back. They're just going to give me a refund. They don't, they said, don't worry about sending it back. So that's oh, weird. Because, yeah, people like you are cluttering up the environment. Okay. Mm. All right. Go, Shri. Um, one thing I did get is I bought a Brother P Touch label maker that is Bluetooth enabled and it runs on the iPhone app. So now I'm able to create labels, you know, these, um, you know, these, I don't know, like these label tapes that uh, you normally have to buy. That's like a, like a keyboard layout type of a little external device that, you know, it's got a display, it doesn't tell you anything, but this one actually is fully voiceover accessible. And what are you planning on labeling, may I ask? Uh, like I'd label my cables that are plugged into something. So then I'll just use my phone to say, read the label. Wow. Aren't you? So you'd use the it app to read that label? That label. I'm sorry, what? You would read, how? what would you read it with? Just regular iPhone, like one of the yeah, apps? Like I would or use, that? Yeah, I would just use, um, are you seeing AI's quick read or shortcut? Read the to, cable. Okay. To read the what the label is. Okay, wow. All right. Sounds like a solution okay. looking for a problem. Anybody else? So I'll confess, I... Uh, but because of Kenny, I bought all these security cameras, so uh, I bought three of them, so we'll see what happens. Who makes them? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> no, Ring. They're Ring. Ring. They're Ring. Yeah, Ring. So that'll be it's owned by fun. Amazon. I think Misha will be triggering all of our cameras. So. Yeah, there's some securities you need to turn those off. Just be aware. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of right. deliveries, this is Michael. Sorry. Yes, sir. I saw they have a, a new thing if you're a Prime member, where I guess there's a special, uh, you know, to help avoid 
what do you call those guys? The porch, porch, porch pirates. Porch thieves. Porch pirates. Thief, yeah. Yes. So to help try to avoid some of that, there's a, a special Amazon garage door opener, and it gives a one-time key to the delivery guy to open the garage and you know put your package in, and then that and then it disappears. That key disappears. But if he stays in there and takes all your stuff, yeah, I was gonna say that's, that's a, this is Shri. Or he has a gun and he takes you hostage. This, <laughs> Go ahead. This Shri. is Brad. If if you're like Go. where I am, the garage is in the back of the house. They're not gonna walk around. They just leave it on the porch anyway. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that. I think we had that feature for a while. I thought, uh, I mean, Amazon had created something to you could unlock something i forgot where you could drop a safe place to drop off something yeah okay. amazon at uh whole foods yeah okay yeah, you know one thing I, one thing i have noticed you know i have a ring doorbell and i've noticed that more people that are leaving packages won't ring the doorbell thinking correct if they if they hit the doorbell it's going to start recording the video but I, I guess what i don't understand is as soon as they walk near the house the ring camera turns on because it's got a motion mm -hmm. sensor but I've definitely noticed that people don't hit the doorbell anymore. So no, the, press the doorbell. They, drop, I should they say. drop it off and run away real quick. Yeah. All right, guys, we are at the end of our call. What a fun discussion we have had. Thank you, Greg, for helping me facilitate tonight. Yes, ma'am. All right. And so quickly, quickly, I said this is a busy week. So tomorrow, Mac Buzz, five to six. Third Wednesday, Android Insight, 7 to 8.30 on Zoom. Thursday, Talk About Trucky Talk, 8 to 9.30, Season 6, Episodes 20 and 21 of The Next Generation. Friday night is Talk Night at the Virtual Movies, and we're going to be watching... Oh, my God. Primal <laughs> Fear. <laughs> Primal Fear. Primal oh. Fear, and that will be starring Richard Gere. That's quite poetic, actually. And then, and then Saturday is, yeah. Apple workshop on Saturday from 2 to 4. That'll be lots of fun. Two interesting presenters and Apple News. All right. Thank you all. And we will be signing off. We hope to see you at any and all of these upcoming events. We appreciate all your great questions and all of your help in answering them. All right. With that, we say good night and happy post best yoga. All right. Goodbye. Good, Good night, night everybody. You. Great meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.